Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fancy Premier League. My name is Serge. And my name is James. I've had to uh, do warm-up exercises, James, do my stretches and get myself prepped because we are about to embark on a marathon this week. Everybody, welcome to Correspondent Week. Uh, and this is the first of your 20 podcasts over the next seven days. And it's with one of the most important clubs for us to discuss ahead of next Friday's Game Week 1 deadline. And as he's already reminded me, he's probably the oldest correspondent as it goes as well. Let me introduce you to our Liverpool correspondent, Dan Lord. How are you, Dan? Hi, everyone. Hi, James. Hi, Serge. How are you doing? Yeah, really yeah, good. Well, thank mate, you. thank you. Uh, where should we start, Dan? Should we start with Mo? 13 yes. million. 13 million about right. Too cheap, too expensive. Um, I suppose with the way the years have gone, um, it's about right. It's the most expensive player in the game. And he's, he's consistently scored the most points throughout, hasn't he? I think there was only one season KDB pipped him over the last three or four years. I mean, I might be wrong in saying that, but it feels that way. He's kind of there um, first or second in the last four years yeah. anyway, as a point scorer. Um, so, yeah, about right, I would have thought. And we'd be very surprised if he's not again, I think. Did, is there any impact on Mane leaving? I mean, he's been great for you for, for so long. What's your thoughts on him exiting? Um, twofold, really. Obviously, yeah, nothing but love for, for, for Sadio. And, uh, you know, he wanted a new challenge. I think he knew this last season. I think the club knew that last season as well. Um, nothing was going to change his mind. Uh, but we will miss him. You know, we'll miss him, we'll miss his goals and we'll make, and miss his press and, and what he brings to the club. So, uh, yeah, bit, bit of sweet, really. And when James started talking about Salah, I thought you were going to start with um, how Dan felt about, obviously, the, the, the whole contract and um, him re-signing on a lot of money. Um, I mean, it'd be stupid to say that you'd ever think that you don't want to re-sign him. You, you clearly wanted wanted to keep him. Um, were you happy when, when they revealed the... Uh, most days video series yeah a bit similar to Sadio really so I'll, I'm happy for Mo and you know he deserves it he, you know as far as players get paid in the Premier League um, it, it has screwed up our structure wage structure a little bit now um, and when people come knocking for new contracts now you know you, you can't really say no he, he's kind of extended that level hasn't he he's gone from what two 200, 220 to, you know, apparently 350. I mean, they all, the, the thing with Liverpool that a lot of people don't see is that, that they have kind of these contracts, but they're, they're, Liverpool's bonuses are pretty big. You know what I mean? They've got good bonuses if, you know, if they win X, Y and Z, score X, Y and Z. So even though it looks like they're not paying as well as the other clubs, in some cases, they, they maybe are. Obviously not to the likes of City and things like that. But um, so... Yeah, I mean, you can't argue it, can you? He's, you know, he's scored so many goals and been so vital for us for the last few seasons, and he should be the highest paid player, mm. arguably, at Liverpool, and, and now he is. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, um, we talked about Mane leaving. It opens up a spot, uh, and Luis Diaz just feels like feels like he fits into it perfectly. Yeah, Diaz come in, hit the ground running, didn't he, at the back end of mm. last season? Um and hopefully we'll see more of that. Uh, what what I'm not confident, and I'm pretty sure it won't happen. He he won't he won't score the same amount of goals as Sadio does or did. Um, so you know we've we've got a bit of a void to fill there. I think uh, I was looking at the stats and uh, 120 goals he scored for Liverpool over the over the you know five six season uh, six seasons. You know it's averaging 20 goals a season. I, I can't see Diaz putting that kind of numbers together. No, but the flip of that is, you must have been impressed with how quickly he hit the ground running. He's a different player to Mane, mm. but it's almost eased the... If, if Diaz is coming in now and you didn't know anything about him like many didn't in January, there'd probably be a bit of trepidation. But the, the fact that he came in and hit the grounds so hard and fast has made the transition quite smooth, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And, and we'll probably touch on it more a bit later. I, I also... I think there's a transition of formation coming through the season as well. And and I think the 4-3-3 might turn into a 4-2-3-1. Let's um, talk about that now. So I think the personnel we've got now, obviously Nunes as part of that, 
he's, he's a nine, he's on the shoulder, he's not a Firmino, he's, he's different to what we've, we've been used to. Um, and a few of the things that's in pre-season, you know, where they've not switched it up to a 4-2-3-1, but, you know, just bringing on the likes of Elliot and Carvalho, uh, and I know they're not going to be starting or getting a lot of minutes early doors. I've just got a feeling with the, with the five subs and, and the way we, we've struggled in the past to break teams down with creativity, I think the 4-2-3-1 uh, might be something we, we, we turn to a, quite a bit in games and ultimately may end up being that way come the end of the season. Yeah, I discussed this quite a bit in the, in the, in the sense you did that quite a lot towards the back end of last season, particularly when you were looking for a goal later in games. Um, and the, the sort of players that you've got coming in, I mean, Carvalho, we probably won't get many mentions during preseason. No one's suggesting he's a FPL asset and he's unlikely to start. But yeah, he, he can play in that role. And I think it's easy to overlook that he was one of the stars of the best team in the championship last year. And I think back to our conversations, Dan, this time last year, where we spoke about the evolution of Liverpool, like, like what's next? Where does it go? And we spoke about the recycling of the squad and if at some point... Uh, a kind of real secondary regular formation would be would become part of the structure. And I think it might. We might see that more often. What's what's the impacts of that, do you think, in terms of if you're going to go to 4 2 3 one regularly, which it doesn't look like at the moment, but you might, what do you think the impact of that is? Um, <clears throat> I think it's more so to, to, to switch up the, the way we played with kind of a false nine a lot. Because if, if, if Nunes is going to be kind of starting uh, long term, he, he's not that kind of player. And actually, we have to adapt to him and, and him to Liverpool to a certain extent as well. But, you know, we, we, we wouldn't want to adapt him that much to, cha- to take away from what his qualities are. And actually, you know, the likes of Carvalho, who, who's been likened a lot to Coutinho in the early days, the way he moves with the ball good close control and pick a pass. He, he's that kind of player. And if you've got, you know, um, Nunes on the shoulder, because he, he will run the channels as well, particularly the left side. But um, I just think that it just it feels like it's moving that way a little bit because Diaz is not a similar kind of player to Mane. We've seen that. He's a little bit different. Obviously, Mo's Mo. Um, and, he, he, you know, he's not... He's an inverted winger, isn't he, really? He's not getting to the byline and putting it back. I just think that the actual personnel suits that kind of structure a little bit more to um, to kind of move that way. And I think it will evolve to that over the course of the season. I was quite um, convinced, to be honest, that City had widened the gap a little bit with their transfer dealings this summer and um, that you were going to struggle to, not struggle to keep up with them, but it wouldn't be as close as it perhaps was at the end of last season. But then thinking about it, um, uh, Diaz, Jota and Salah in behind Nunez and then you've got the wing-backs Trent and uh, Robertson or full-backs bombing on actually you could score a lot of goals and maybe the gap isn't going to widen like I think you're it's going to because that sounds scary about, Yeah, we're talking about having an extra attacking player regularly on the pitch mm. potentially Yeah, yeah. and I think <clears throat> although we've, we don't seem to have improved from an 11 I think over the course of the last two or three years the actual squad depth of Liverpool has improved considerably. And, and before, where we were worried about people getting injured and who's going to come in, I think now we've got lots of capable replacements. You know, I, I still think Curtis Jones is a great player and needs more minutes. Uh, or the Elliot, we saw glimpses last year before his injury. Mm. Obviously, Carvalho now, you know, they still they still love Naby to the coaching staff. You know, he's still around. So, you know, are we... Get, are we season after season we say it but are we actually going to get a good season out of Naby this year he showed glimpses again last year of why we got him and then and then Bobby Bobby seems sharp for the first couple of games this season he, he you know the, the highlights I've seen and the matches I've seen he's, he, he seems to have shedded a bit of timber and, and looks a bit leaner so you know we've got we've got plenty of personnel and We'll be there or thereabouts, I think. Listen, there's 18 other teams very jealous at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, one's, no one's feeling overly overly sorry for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess if it moves to 4 2 3 one, I, sp- I suppose the biggest difference in terms of what we might see from Liverpool is, is more of a sitting two, isn't it? Rather than a, a midfield three. And and I assume from that, Thiago and Fabinho would be first choice. Are we looking at potentially a bit of a phasing out 
of Jordan Henderson because we know in the period the, the COVID season where you, you had that that period at Anfield where you couldn't win games and it was obvious that he was absent uh, along with obviously Van Dijk and you were struggling for leadership in your team is there a little danger in terms of phasing him out or do you feel like the likes of Van Dijk and Salah have really evolved in terms of their progression within the side as leaders um Yes and no. I do still think there's a massive kind of respect for Henderson within the squad. Um, and I don't think, you know, when I'm saying the 4 2 3 one, I, I feel like, you know, it could be the back end of, of the season where actually we may evolve into that from a starting 11. I'm more thinking of 60, 70 minutes gone, change it up a little bit, and actually, you know, Henderson comes off and, and we go to a 4 2 3 one and, and, and more, more that way as opposed to kind of phasing him out completely. I, I still think he's great. A lot of people, you know, he has, he has his critics. Um, but Emerson, you know, he does exactly what he says on the tin, doesn't he? And, uh, you know, and the plus he's got all that knowledge, experience and, and respect. So I, th I think he's still a big player for us, even though, you know, he's getting on. Fun fact on Jordan Henderson, James, just to prove that last week while I was away in Wales, I was listening to the quizzes played more minutes in the Premier League in the 2010s than James Milner. And every other player in the league. And every other player, yeah. <laughs> well, I think James Milner, just because we think he's probably well up there as the highest minutes. But yeah, I, I had a good listen on the old uh, quizzes last week, James. Um, and I'm a, I was amazed at that, at that stat as well. I mean, he just seems to be an ever-present all the time when he's fit, Jordan did Henderson. You, uh, did you get many of them quiz questions right, by the way? The we'll, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that on Patreon. <laughs> we'll <laughs> Put it in the pod questions. That. And uh, I did write down my scores from, from the quizzes last week, mate. There is, uh, Dan, a, a little bit of a... I don't think it's from within Liverpool, actually. From the outside, uh, a kind of a... All oh, Liverpool need another midfield player on that. And I think possibly because of that that Henderson might be being phased. But I look at it, and me and Sujavari discussed discussed this. I look in the background, I think, well, you still got, you mentioned Curtis Jones. You missed Harvey Elliott, who made an incredible start last year, and he's obviously back up and running now. So you're not short in that area. You've got Naby Keita as well. That's just six central midfield players. We haven't spoke about the likes of Milner can play there. Oxley chamberlain uh, Tyler Morton, who we saw very briefly last winter and stuff. You're not sure, are you? No, we're not sure. And I, and I think this is... Um... I just don't think he's going to panic by it. I saw an interview with him yesterday with, with Klopp and um, he said that that's it. The transfers are finished for the summer unless someone goes or we get a we get kind of a, a season-ending injury. So I, they, they, they want, I'm pretty sure it's not his common knowledge, they want Bellingham. Dortmund don't want to release him this time. It's going to be next year, yeah. It's going to be next year, but then, you know, you're going to have to play, pay through the teeth because everyone's going to want him next year if, if he plays another season like he's done the last couple. Um, he's, he's a great talent and it'd be great to have him in, but he's just paying this guy at the moment, isn't it? Did the, did the Nunes signing su surprise you? Um, no, they had to freshen it up. They had to they had to get younger because we have got a, an aging squad. You know, Sadio was 30, uh, Salah's 30, 31. You know, we've got a lot of players at like, you know, 30s, early 30s. And, you know, we have players to come through like Jones and Elliot and, and the youngers. Trent's still young, Robbo's reasonably young still. Uh, but it, we needed to freshen it up and we needed to get younger. Obviously, Div Divot wanted to leave. Uh, Minamino went. We, we were light up front actually and um i suppose the, the bad scouts obviously watching him and, and and the the most uh kind of torrid time i, I saw van dyke and and uh matip struck canati i have last season was actually against benfica where where nunez gave us a run around whether he just played out of his skin that day or or just they had an off day i don't know but he, he gave them problems all through the match and i think uh that that pricked up the ears, I think, in that match. Is he definite first choice in your eyes? I don't think he'll start, no. Really? He, he I don't think he'll start the season, no. I don't think he will. Um, like, I, like I said earlier, I think Liverpool's got to get used to him and he's got to get used to Liverpool. You know, he doesn't speak English yet, although he's learning. He's, he's relying a lot on, a, a little bit like Diaz did, on Thiago to do a lot of the kind of translating. And, yeah, I think he... You know, he's obviously going to get minutes with five subs. He's getting minutes, but I'll be, I'll be shocked if Bobby doesn't start 
first match against Fulham. Wow, that's really interesting. A lot, yeah, a lot of people would say that um, it didn't seem to bother him a couple of days ago in, in the friendly when he stuck three away. Four. 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 As yeah. a sub. Yeah, but look, come on, let's face it. How much value do we put into friendlies? Um, Depends on the results. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, exactly. You know, <laughs> in pre-season, teams are ahead of other teams in, in, in kind of terms of preparation, in fitness, um, and actually watching the match. Salzburg did all right for the first half. Liverpool controlled it, but they did all right. But they just dropped off in Salzburg. They weren't, they weren't fit enough. And, Leipzig, and, wasn't it? Uh, sorry, Leipzig. Leipzig. I'm, I'm just Easy to Red get Bull. the Red Bulls confused, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they just dropped off a little bit, and, and that's why. But, you know, have you seen the goals? I mean, a couple of decent goals, but the keeper should have had two of them at least. Yeah, but then mm. he was getting untold stick for a couple of uh, chances that he missed in the friendly against Manchester United. And then it flipped completely the other way where as he'd scored four and I looked the next morning and he was in drafts on Twitter. Oh, that was <laughs> the typical overreaction to friendlies. Absolutely not occurred to me that he wouldn't start the season though, Dan. I know you're quite high on, on Firmino, but you were very critical of him last year that he'd had a he'd had a drop off i know that was quite big from you because you've always realized the importance of firmino to the team i'm not convinced he'd start over nunez though personally i just not i'm not convinced that that nunez will start from the off i think he, 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 you're going to ease him in um i don't i mean i may i may be wrong and um maybe the next couple of friendlies and the and the community you know the community shield will show is different but in my head at the moment, I, I don't see Nunes starting from, from the off. So take it opening day as it stands, you'd see it as Salah, Firmino and uh, Diaz? Yeah, Jota, Jota's not fit. Jota won't start. He's, he's got a hamstring problem. Uh, Alisson's not fit at the moment, but they, they think he'll be right. He's, he's, he's in training again. So then, and, and, and what you mentioned right early on, um, I, I also think probably Canate starts over Matic as well. Think, All right, that's, uh, that's answered one of the forthcoming questions. So, yeah, I'd, I'd expect it to be um, one of the neighbours giving me a wave. I'd expect it Hi. to be uh, <laughs> Robo, uh, Robo uh, obviously, Verge, Konate, and, uh, Trent, Trent. And, then Wilson, and then the three of probably either Nabi or Anderson, and then uh, Fabinho and Thiago, and like you said, Diaz, uh, Bobby, and, um, and Salah. Mm -hmm. I think back to your team a couple of years ago, the team that pushed City so close in 2019. And the problem with that team was first 11, probably the best around. As soon as you strip layers out, admittedly, you'd have days like obviously Origi and that played against Barcelona in the, in the semi final, but, but it was a drop off and we all knew it. Now you can see that evolution has happened where there is competition. Yes, we know Robertson's first choice over Shimikas, but actually when he came in last year, he did quite well. The club have, have invested in uh, Calvin Ramsey from Aberdeen this year as, as back up to Trent. Kelleher looks a better second choice now. You've got four centre-backs when two seasons ago, I think you, you played 11 different players at centre-back during the course of the season. You've got these attacking players now, even like Covalio, he's the next stage. I mean, eventually he could maybe even take over from Salah. Who knows, possibly. So it really feels like it's, it's beefed up. Yet, yeah, when we look at it from an FPL perspective, we you're, you're the first team we go, I wish I could have four or five. Mm. Absolutely. Last season was a, was a really easy in the first kind of 12, it felt like 12, 13 game weeks. James might be more precise, but I had three Liverpool players and it was worth 25 to 30 points every single week at the start of last season. And it felt like it was uh, the majority of teams. That was just both, Salah. Yes, well, Salah <laughs> captain Trent. And then the debate was basically Jota or Robertson when he was fit um, or somewhat had uh, gone into Shimikas because he was cheap. But it was Trent, Salah and a another. And it was 25 to 30 points every week. The debate this year seems to be Salah versus Diaz for some, Diaz versus Robertson as an 8 million versus 7 million for some. And Allison seems to have thrown his hat into the ring at 5.5 million as well. So um, I'm, I don't think Jota as, as a forward as, at 9 million was as interesting, but the other five were all really viable. And I think we might see a bit more of a spread on which Liverpool assets people might go for at the start of this season. Yeah, I think, like you said, um, 
it's easier to pick Liverpool players because obviously Liverpool and City over the last three or four years have been, have been the big point scorers in, in terms of, of, of the teams and also FPL. But it's safer with Liverpool. You know what you're getting, don't you? Whereas mm. City, you know, you don't know who it is from week to week. No. Um, and, you know, they get clean sheets and the full-backs assist a lot of the goals they score. Um, and, and they score a goal, particularly the, the, the front three or at least the wingers. So... It, they are an easy pull, aren't they? And you know that if you pick a Salah or a Mane, they're not going to get rested. You know what I mean? Unless there's a big match on the horizon or whatever, or, they, or they're carrying a niggling injury. They're, they're playing regardless. Whereas if you picked a, a Mares or a Foden, you, you just don't know when, when they're not going to play. Mm. Even a Cancelo or, a, or a, is it Diaz this week or is it Laporte? So it becomes easy to pick the Liverpool players from that point of view. You know, they're less likely to miss out. The only one we've really had that problem with last season was Jota, mm. who now that he's obviously injured and he's extremely unlikely to be available game week once as, as off the table. Just just quickly on him, Dan, does him moving reclassification to a forward, does that kind of rule him out of your thought process now? I know he wouldn't be in your game week one team anyway, but I mean, what do you think as the season goes on? Because on paper, it's difficult to foresee him being first choice, which is remarkable. Um, no, it doesn't rule him out. I don't, I don't think. Obviously, from the off, it would. But um, I mean, he, he'll get minutes. He'll still play, you know. And you know, he could he could be ahead of Nunes for quite a lot of the games. I think. I don't, I've, all these people are thinking Nunes is going to come in, hit the ground running, a bit like Holland, and and, and, and bang loads of goals. And I, I don't see that happening. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to be proved wrong, but. You know, I, I don't think he's first choice at the moment. And, and I think Jota's over him, but Jota's injured at the moment. He's right poo-poo Darwin, isn't he, Serge? <laughs> yeah, um, I wasn't, to be honest, considering him for the start anyway, just because of the price. Um, for me at the moment, the debate's actually between uh, Diaz and, and Alisson for my third Liverpool player. Um, so I, I, to be honest, I wasn't considering him anyway, James. Well, there's a few that are. Do you know what his ownership mm. is, Serge Nunes? I haven't. No, I have no idea, but I'd He's, have a stab at go on. between five and ten. I don't think it'd be double digits. It's fifteen. Wow. Well, How much at the time of recording, before? and we should say all the correspondent week podcasts are pre-recorded. This is recorded uh, on Sunday. How much <laughs> do you attribute before, to before. Liverpool fans? Um, because obviously, I think a lot of uh, players of FPL that are overseas might be Liverpool fans and picking them because they want to pick the, the new signing. I don't know how much that sways the ownership number there. Possibly thoughts on that, Dan. Yeah, um, I mean, if if, if it's and, and the four goals we should add as well. Yeah, well, the four goals, has, yeah. More, yeah, the four goals. I think more so. I think if it's a Liverpool fan, stroke FPL fan, it's a it's what we call or, or what we don't like to call casual FPL fans. Because I think if you are a Liverpool fan and you play FPL, then that that wouldn't sway you, would it? Otherwise, you're doing it all wrong. Um. Yeah, no, I, th- I think he, he will become an option, or I hope he will become an option uh, throughout the season, but not not from the get-go. Okay, that's fine. We, we have a clear Liverpool free template that people have in mind at the moment. That's Trent, Diaz and Salah. Is that where your thought process is, is at, Dan, for the Liverpool guys? Um, Trent, definitely. Um. I would have Diaz or Salah, I'm not sure which one yet. And I'd, I'd probably have Robertson or, or even Konati or Van Dijk as well. I might wow, have interesting. And uh, one of the midfielders. All right, let's talk about that defence then. Um, how many million hmm. is Trent underpriced, in your opinion? Um, well, he's the highest, he's the highest priced defender, <laughs> isn't he? But um, yeah. He just puts back to back numbers together, doesn't he? He's he's underpriced. I think you it's silly not to get him, isn't it, at that can, price. Can you make any case not to? Um the only case is if you if you need that point five and you're desperate for it, and I can't see him scoring that many more points than Robertson at seven. He will outscore him, I would have thought, but to the to the extent of that point five where you could use it elsewhere, maybe not. Serge Trent. Trent uh, lock. There's no question in my mind. I mean, consistently at that 200 and something points for the last three or four years, yeah, Trent's a lock at seven and a half for me. Yeah, um, I, no, I think no debate. I think nine million, James, uh, in answer to the question. That Dan well, nine million underpriced. It no, should be 16. It should be, well, 
not quite, but yeah, one one and a half million. I think nine million would be a fair price for Trent. Is at least a, a million, isn't it? But interestingly, I I spoke to you our first week back when we did the, the intro to the season five year, the idea of not having Trent just because of the explosiveness in terms of his ownership numbers and it being yeah. one where, look, Robertson, we discussed it, Robertson outperformed Trent in terms of overall FPL points towards the end of last season over a significant little period. Can I fight against it? Like, if you want to be differential, can you go Robertson rather than Trent? Yes, you can. But, but it would be better to have that debate if Trent was a million or 1.5 million more than Robertson. For 0.5, it, it, it doesn't really feel like pushing against. Plus... The ownership is not as high as I thought it was going to be, Serge, when, when the game opened that first week. He's at 54.3% ownership at the time recording. And I really thought that would be sort of at least 64.3% by this stage. Yeah. It's not. So he's got scope. So I was saying to you, like, a, a, if his ownership starts at a certain point, how's he going to end up at 8.5 million by the end mm. of this coming season? But from that point, yeah, I mean, he could comfortably end up in 80% of teams within the first month or so. So there's certainly scope to growth. But yeah, like you, Dan, Robertson, to go with him at the moment is my thought process. It sounds like it's yours as well. I'm, I'm debating Kanate, to be honest. He's 5 million. Okay. Uh, if we're just looking for that. The thing is, it depends where you go, doesn't it? I mean, there's so many different options. But um, at, at some point, a lot of people might be looking for a three, three forwards. And, and that way, you know, with big hitters, if you're looking at Haaland, Kane, Jesus, even Darwin, you know, when he comes, when he starts, you know, playing regularly, you know, there's a lot of your budget eating up there. And actually, a five million Liverpool defender might be might be a good way to save some of that money. But where do you stand on him versus uh, Matip? I guess we can kind of put Gomez in the conversation as well a little bit, but um, definite understudy. Because what we had last year was Matip primarily playing Premier League and really good, actually, by the way. He had an outstanding season. Canate playing Champions League and also doing really well. You're expecting that to, to change now by the sounds of it? Well, Canate played the bigger matches the back end of last season, surprisingly. If, if I had a choice, I'd play Matip still. Um, I, I do prefer Matip over Canate. Um, and, and actually, I prefer Gomez over possibly both of them, but definitely wow. Canate. Uh, but, you know, he, he, he's taken him a while to get over that injury. Uh, he's looking good again in pre-season. And, you know, he, he's not going to be wanting to be sat on the bench week in, week out, uh, wasting his kind of career away. So, you know, uh, Virgil's kind of locked, isn't he, unless he gets injured. So, it, you know, there's a fight for the other places and, and it could go either way. But I, I, my inkling is that Canati will, will start, but there, there will be rotation. So it is a bit of a risk. From an FPL point of view, uh, you could throw Alisson into the same conversation because he's only half a million, for, half a million more sorry, um, than Canati, like you said, at 5.5. And you know you're going to get reliability from Alisson. Um, to be honest with you, I've been looking at him as my goalkeeper, him, Trent and um, Diaz as the three that I would go with from Liverpool. But with the best teams, I feel like you want to just get the best players. And Liverpool have the best goalkeeper at a fair price, the best defender at a fair price, and the best midfielder in the game in Salah. Why would you want to go anywhere around the dregs for the, the kind of second-tier Canates of the world and Matips of the world to save a bit of money? Just get the best from Liverpool because they're almost guaranteed points. Yeah, I mean, I, I th I'll probably end up with Robertson and, and Trent and Salah or Diaz. Um, I, I don't think the others are, are not options, though, if you wanted to you know, invest elsewhere. Um, Ali Alisson, obviously, he'll get the clean sheets, he'll get safe points. Um, Rob Robertson offers that extra, doesn't he? I know he's a, you know, quite a little bit more expensive, but um, it, it, it depends where, you, where you're looking for money. Doesn't it? You know, if, if you if you want to just start with your three Liverpool, put them three in, and then work around that, then then so be it. But if you if you're kind of keen on somebody else, you know, uh, Haaland and, and Jesus and, and Darwin front three or something like that, or a Kane or a Son and a Salah, there's there's that many high priced players that some something's got to give somewhere. And if it does, I, I, what I'm trying to say is, I think Canati and, and Allison would probably be options, and 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 Van Dijk. Because it generally boils down to that 0.5 or 1, doesn't it? You're sure to have the team you want. Um, and and they're, they're definitely options. 
they're not going to score the same amount as the other guys. Don't get me wrong, uh, but there's still options. It's interesting. I think psychologically, when you're looking for that 0.5, you tend to take away from something else. You don't take away from Trent to Robertson. I don't think mm. you take away. From, I'll go from the six million midfielder to the five point five. I think that's where you you generally try and find it. I think it fills with if Canate does become clear first choice, it feels more like we can drop to it, move two million say from Robertson to somewhere else, rather than start get it wrong and have to move it quickly. Um, on Allison, interestingly. Only 10 FPL points less than Robertson last year. Now, admittedly, Allison played every minute and Robertson only played, I think, about almost about 80 to 85%. But there will be a little bit of rotation where Shimikas will get minutes now and again. That's one where you can make the saving. And I know, Dan, you've always been of the opinion with Allison that it's wasting a Liverpool spot. But you can make a real case for him now, I think. Mm. If he stays fit, he will be the highest scoring goalkeeper in the game. It's almost a certainty. Yeah. And he'll yeah. score more than any other 5.5 million player in the game. Yeah, I think I think the thing with not not that you're wasting a spot. Well, yes, wasting a spot, but all, also the it's not just the defensive spot. So say say Diaz really takes off this year. You've already got Salah. You've already got uh, Trent. Diaz takes off and and starts banging him in or getting loads of assists, and then suddenly Nunes is there, a score in, and and you know whoever else Robertson starts putting up good numbers, then you, you, you'd be like, well, I'm getting the clean sheets I'm getting for Trent and, and Robbo, but actually I'm not getting much more out of Alisson here. I wish it had gone somewhere else. So that that's the danger when I say you, you're wasting a spot is that actually you, you're getting the bare minimum, aren't you, really? He's not he's not putting up 15 saves a game and, and getting three or four extra points. When, when you have narrow wins, the odd one nil and stuff, He's, he's quite often in like an eight pointer or so, mate. I know he's mm. he's not going to be the fifteen pointer. We know that unless he saves a penalty, but th- they add up. He's not like if oh, you yeah. compare if you compare him to Edison, for example. Edison feels like a flat of six, whereas with your lot, you actually intentionally allow shots on goal. It's part of your defensive strategy, and therefore he he is more likely to get the save tiers under bonuses than Edison for a comparable. Yeah, I agree. He is, and he and he's. Yeah, and he's more likely to get bonus because of that. You know, the more saves you make, then obviously the, the more chance you have of getting bonus. I, I, I just think that if you've got him in there, and yes, it's an easy flip, but you, often people want to pick the keepers and, and stay with the keepers and not waste transfers on the keepers. Um, so if, if you've got him in there and someone else does start putting up good numbers or, or Darwin puts a run together and starts getting some goals, then... Where do you find that third extra slot? It's it's Allison, isn't it? You're not touching Trent or Salah if they, if they continue doing what they normally do. So then, that's where it becomes the problem of of having to ship out your keeper, and then who do you go for? As at, at that time, the, most of the keepers are probably point point one, point two more up, or you know five point six, five point seven, or unless they've been dire and they go the one other of, way. So. One of the four point fives will probably make it worth the million saving. But you've, but you've you've got to get it right. And that's mm. the difficult bit, whereas think, you can look at Alisson and relax and, and know it's safe. Go on, so. I, I know what uh, Dan's saying about you, you kind of, where do you want to make that transfer to find the Liverpool player that's popping off at the moment? But I, I don't want to waste transfers on my Liverpool players. Like, I'd love to have it as a set and forget. And, and I agree with you, James. Like, I think, uh, what did uh, Alisson score last year? 176 points, I think. Spot off, on, yeah. Off, yeah, so... You're right. I don't think there's going to be a 5.5 million player in the game that will score. That I mean, I'm just trying to think. Can I can I see Perisic? <laughs> well, that was the name I was thinking in my head. <laughs> but but he'd have to have a blinder of a season to get to 176 yeah, points. Yeah, he, he won't get see... any, He won't get near the minutes. Perisic will have little explosions. I should imagine. Mm. Can you see Neto, for example, getting anywhere near no. 176 points? No, so, that that so doesn't that, mean that Neto's way... a bad pick, by the way. No, exactly. I don't think he'll get to that number. No. And that's where Allison's kind of a, a comfort blanket. But the other thing is, um, and we talked about it on pods where we've kind of been previewing the game, there'll be a lot of early wild cards. So if you end up on the wrong three Liverpool, um, and it's easy with Liverpool players to get FOMO. Like if, if Diaz is popping off and everyone's on Salah, they're going to want to go across. If, if Robertson's popping off and Trent's not, people are going to want to make that move. Um, I think people might just pull the wild card early um, and, so many and, and, and make a change on the Liverpool uh, two or three, but you know what happens when um, when you make that sideways move, you, you get yourself ready to get burnt. Yeah, 
you, you'll do that, and then and then Trent will start scoring, and Robertson yeah. won't, and, and vice versa of all the other players. That's how it goes, and that's FPL in a nutshell, isn't it? You mm. you, that, you actually got to hold sometimes, stick, stick with your gut, and not yeah, not get influenced by the odd couple of game where he's not been scoring. You know, you're in it for the long haul, especially when you. Picking these kind of players, you, yeah, you have the three or four players that the ones that are in and out and, and, and sampling them. It's worth saying that exactly what you'd said, Sage, with most people likely to wild card, let's say game week three to eight, the majority are mm-hmm. going to be kind of clustered in and around there and the first international break, which is before game week nine. That picking Allison for his consistency, yeah, we all agree, but it doesn't, doesn't feel right because we're not looking for 38 games, we're probably looking at eight at max. Some people running to be looking for two, three. So like Canate, it really might develop. We're at five million. You go, mm. it's blindly obvious playing every week. And he might, if he's playing every week and he's cheaper than Allison, you don't want Allison. No. You want Canate in, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. That Dan on Salah, you're you're not certain. And I think your your answer to this will be the same as what mine's been is it's not that I don't want Mo Salah, it's I definitely want the other three. <laughs> it's mm. probably where it is. Yeah, and it's not just the other three. It's it's maybe others others from other teams um, that that the funds don't allow me to do that. If you know, I'd I'd quite like De Bruyne or the Haaland, for example, but I'd also like Son and Kate. You know what I mean? You just you just can't have any bonus. Everybody, can you? And you know, if you if you're saving five million from Salah to Diaz, then it allows you to to bump up in in other places. But at the same time, you might get burned because we know how explosive he is. So it's it's one of them. Um, that there's no right or wrong answer, is there? And and with FPL, no. and I think more so this year, I think you can you could go even if Salah got 250 points, you could you could go the whole season without him and still win FPL. You know what I mean? With with the other variations, I think there's a lot of players going to score points this year. I think there's going to be a, a better spread. I think Tottenham will be closer than they were last year. I think. Um, I know Chelsea got a drub in yesterday, but I think they will be when, when they when they start clicking. Arsenal are obviously better. United can't be any worse. So I think, you know, that these teams are going to score more points in, in real football, which will obviously lead on to more points in FBL. You know, um, with the, the Luis Diaz um, and that saving, I mean, that, that £8 million midfielder spot, there's so many good options there. And I think you, you can reel them off. Kulisevsky, Mason Mount, Bukaya Saka... Um, obviously Diaz as well. There's never been any doubt that Diaz is the one that I'm going to, though. I'd have him over any of the others, and I'd really like to have Mason Mount or Kulisevsky in my, in my squad as well. But Diaz at eight million has just like Trent has just not left my squad because I think he's the best of all of that pack. I don't know if you guys agree. Um, I don't know, James, if you think that Kulu might be as explosive this year as no, what, Diaz what's, can be. What's, what's really interesting with it, um, if you compare and say to Kulazewski is, I guess with Richarlison in, there's there's minutes doubt, and X minutes is going to mm. going to become a thing this season. You look at Saka and you think there's no concern there; he's, he's quite nailed. Could easily be the talisman. Could outscore Jesus, for example. Mason Mount will play the majority of games at Chelsea. Kulazewski for me is definite first choice at Tottenham, but that might evolve and change. Yeah. And actually, because of the Jota injury, Diaz. And trying to integrate Nunes into the team. Right now, we don't feel like, and it's not to say we're certain here, we don't feel like there's that doubt about Diaz. Yeah. Like we had all last season with Jota. Right now, Diaz feels quite almost safe. Feels comforting in a way to know. So I think it's exactly that, what Dan said. No one who goes without Salah doesn't want Mo Salah. Like I know what the risk is. Dan will know what the risk is. But you start breaking it down, don't you? And you go, mm. do I want Salah and Kulazewski? and an extra million, or, or basically it becomes Salah and Grealish, for example, or do I want De Bruyne and Diaz? That's the, kind of the comparable. And then you've got a real debate on your hand at that stage. Yep. Mo, of course, is the captain comfort. Well, Son and Diaz, James, is the combination yeah, that I'm so. looking at, which is even more... Well, same as me, to be mm. totally honest, yes. Um, Salah's the comfort blanket in the sense that if I was going with just one premium, 100% is him. He's he's the guy you can put the armband on any game, any time. You know he's going to be involved. You know he's probably going to have the most shots in the league. He's going to have the most shots in the box. The most big chance. Everything that you want from him still exists. He's not got worse or anything. Okay, he wasn't 
as good in the second half of the season as he was in the first. But he's the highest priced player in the game for a reason. It's just the the combinations. Diaz, Robertson, and Trent for what's that? Twenty two and a half million. He's robbing someone. You've got to use more than half of that just for Salah. You know, I I kind of make that argument to myself about going Salahless every day, James, and then just look at his points total from the last four years, and you literally just look at it and think, wow, this guy's no, an absolute I points get that. machine. And just just looking at his his point score, there's enough to really worry me and make me want to go back to to Salah as a premium. Do you think the, the Trent? Go on, Dan. Yeah, the worry with Salah, which we have every year, is is effective ownership, isn't it? And actually, by going without him, if he does bang, it it it, it hits you twofold, doesn't it? You don't yeah. have the points, but actually everybody else has, and they've doubled them, and that gap becomes bigger. That's the worry with Salah more than anything, I think. But that's not quite such the case this year because currently we've got two players with more ownership than him in Jesus and Haaland. So actually going in at the start, Salah's not potentially the big... He might be on game week one, but take game week two. You've got Crystal Palace at home game week two. But as it stands, Haaland is going to be the big EOO, big EO fear in game week two is Haaland at home to Bournemouth rather than Salah at home to Palace. And it's that, it's the City Tottenham captaincy rotation that starts really good as well. So it's not just the case. Because you, you, if you look elsewhere, you need to think, right, well, can I can I try and beat? I don't think Sun, KDB, Horn, I don't think any of them outscore Salah in the first six weeks or so. But I think combinations at the right time could. If you're, if you're going yeah. Sun for the right three, Haaland for the right three as comparables in those home fixtures, then yes, I, I, I think it can. There's no right and wrong on Mo Salah. And I, I, I certainly wouldn't say to anyone, don't pick Mo Salah. <laughs> you know what's coming when you do. I, I know what's coming. Yeah, like, like you said, the, the numbers don't lie to these. It's consistently put numbers together and there's no reason to believe this year won't be any different. No, so... exactly that. Even if even if the system changes, it's one of the things said at Stark, if there's formation tweaks, but like, is there an impact to, to Mo's numbers regressing if you go to 4 2 three, one? No. It's Mo Salah. He's one of the best players on the planet. So. Yeah. No, I don't think there's a, there's a fear on that. Do you think it can have an impact on Trent and Robertson if you line up that way, though? Um, possibly. The, the, we, what we've been doing a little bit more so with Trent than, um, than Robertson in pre-season, he's, he's, he's found, finding himself in that centre midfield role Again, a yeah. little bit. You know, like Cancelo does for um, City. And, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's evolving that way a little bit. But I don't, I don't think there's any worries because actually what we have in Nunes, which we've not had with anybody else, is we've got that aerial threat as well now. And we both know that them two can ping the ball into the box. And, mm. you know, he's a big, strong lad, is, is Nunes. So, you know, I think he'll get quite a few of his goals with his head. Yeah, no, no one delivers better than Trent. One of the things I was no. going to say on, on Caps, say, the other thing is potentially going out without Moe's, is there a given day where you can be comfortable captain in a Diaz or, or Trent? I mean, how would you feel about that, Dan? No, I wouldn't. I think if you, you I would, I would always favour captain in a premium. And I know um, Trent's a, a kind of defensive premium, but when I talk premium, I'm talking your Canes, KDBs, Suns, Salas. They're, they're the ones, Haaland's, they're the ones you really want the iron band on because they're the, they're the explosive ones, aren't they? They're the ones who, not only once or twice a year will will we'll bag double figure holes. You know, they'll do it six or seven or eight times a season. Whereas, you know, the other ones you've got to be lucky to hit it at that point. Trent less so, you know, he's he's probably got a few all it all he needs is a goal, a couple of assists, a couple of assists, bonus, clean sheet, and he's there. But I think I think the, the arm band always has to go on one of the one of the big hitters. I don't... In last. Listen, no. we all kept, we all Captain yeah. Dennis and Veghorst last year and shit, right? So, well, yeah, I said always, but that, that, the, the fixtures, the fixtures led to that, didn't they? You know what I mean? I yeah, wish everybody. they hadn't. So does everybody else? Yeah. It's funny. Well, um, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like we're more comfortable captaining like a Liverpool defender, a Trent, or what have you, in a double game week than we would be in a single game week. Because whenever Liverpool have a double game week, you think, you know what? That's a double chance of a clean sheet because of how many clean sheets. You, you keep and the chance of an attacking return. Why is that, James? Right? 
Uh, I think it's probably no. I think we, obviously Liverpool and City, if they're both going for the title at the end, you mm. really feel like they're going to firm it up a little bit. The four and five nils become more like two and three nils. That that's that's how it feels psychologically. I think. I mean, obviously in 36 Liverpool conceded against both both Tottenham and Aston Villa. So uh, it's possible it's psychological, but Liverpool have that capacity to go six, seven games with six, seven clean sheets even. It, it's possible. Mm. So I think it's it's you a belief that to. concentration is bigger at the end of the season. Obviously, years ago, when I started with all three at the back, wasn't it Trent, Robertson and Van Dijk, all three of them. Mm. And if I'd have held my nerve all season, it was almost the right thing to do. But obviously, Alisson got injured and I should have jumped ship. And then we can see you were, you were winning games 3 0 and conceding with like five minutes to go yeah. every game. So, like, what's going on here? So, I think you think towards the end of the season, just the concentration levels are higher. It's psychological, it's, it doesn't make I a huge difference. I think it's recency bias as well, isn't it? Yeah. I think um, over the past few seasons, was it Stones or was it Laporte? They put like 22 points to get. You know, people are thinking actually the way to go is defenders on double game weeks. And I think that's from years gone by where the actual higher scoring people are, but, you know, have been defenders. I don't think it was last year, but the, the seasons before. Dan, hopes for this season off the back of two cups last year. Um, it's nearly, got the title. Nearly, nearly completing football. I mean, yeah, I, I honestly <laughs> hopes, didn't think it was on. Yeah, hopes, obviously, I want to I want to win the Premier League um, mm. and, and win the Champions League, win the FA Cup and the League Cup. But um, realistically, I'd, League, I want to win the Premier League, um, and and good good runs in the other cups would be would be great. I think we'll be there and thereabouts in all of them. I think we'll put good cup runs together, and I think we'll be pushing pushing the for the title. Um, yeah, that's that's been a change. The domestic yeah. cups has been a change recently. It's because of the size of the squad now. Yeah, absolutely. So Did yeah, I think, think we've definitely got a chance. We've definitely got a chance to win the Premier League, uh, and I think it's it's City again, isn't it? And, and obviously, if if Liverpool don't win it, it'll be City. But um, I think you know Tot- Tottenham and, and Arsenal and and Chelsea will all push. People aren't talking about Chelsea. You, they're a bit like Liverpool fans. I saw the negative stuff on there, just like when we got beat off United in the pre-season friendly and. And actually, Chelsea are still a good side. You know what I mean? They've got some good players. And yes, they've started poorly, but I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll come good again. Where do you think you'd finish, Dan? I think, I think second. I'd like to say first, but I, I, I think we'll probably just get pipped again. But you, you never know. A little bit of luck, avoid injuries. And, you know, we, we're good enough to do so as long as we, um, we perform consistently. It's interesting. It's flipped a bit, though. I think your squad is stronger than theirs now. Yeah, yeah. For the first time, I think, uh, it, yeah, it definitely is. And um, you know, they've lost a few players, haven't they? Who, who were who were good players, but actually not not first teamers. You could argue Sterling was, but Zinchenko was in and out, wasn't he? And um, uh, who was the other one? Jesus in and out as well. So I just think you've got better depth now. In a way, Steve. Look at yeah, them centre backs and stuff, and the different attacking options. Yeah, I think we have. I think, and I think I said it last season. I think that's why we we need to evolve the formation a little bit and, and change it up a little bit because we almost come become too predictable. It's been a lot of you know ever since Klopp's got there, we've done this four three three, and because we had the personnel to do so. Um, that is kind of slipping away. Manny's now gone. Firmino's aging, and actually, I think there's a. I've heard there's a bid from Juventus today for 23 million for Firmino, so that might turn his head. And then, um, so I, th- I think that that switch of formation probably needs to happen because the, you know, the the people they're bringing in are, are not like for light replacements. You know, like we've already alluded to earlier. I well, wish you luck, mate. Yeah. So just what three for you? Uh, you for me at the moment, oh, it, it's going to be Diaz, Trent and Alisson, I think. But Alisson might turn okay. into Robertson. I think it's going to be Trent, Robertson, Diaz for me. I think. But you don't need, be- you don't literally only need, I think, something like a sun doubt or something. And I think Mo will find his way back in. Yeah. Dan, pleasure. Thank you so much. Where can everyone follow you on the bird app, mate? Um, it says it there on the screen at FPL underscore local Lord. 
That's the um, one. Are your uh, mini league places filled? Uh, I've got about 10 places still available in League 4, but you've got to have, like, not really good overall rank history to get Is in that, that why league. me and Sid are in it? <laughs> no, I'm in sure I'm in League 4 or League, league 5. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it was just due to popular demand, I kind of put on a, another league. Uh, and then I started to make script because a lot of people wanted to join, but they've got like seven top 10k finishes, and it's it's not fair to put them in the same league as, as the other guys who are in there who've never broken 100k or something like that. So, fair Dan, absolute pleasure. Thank you so yes. much for your time, mate. Good luck for the Indeed. season. Thanks, thanks so much. And uh, James, I'm getting flashbacks now because when we did Correspondence Week last year, at the end of every uh, every episode, I'm like, where are we going to next? And it felt like nauseous because you never plan it like a nice route around the country. We're going up, down, left, right, and every which way. And I think I know where we're going next. And it's a well, long old journey. To be honest, I'll let you into a secret. It was meant to be walls, but Matt Samuel got called in for work <laughs> abroad this week. So we had to do a jingle run. So we were, we were off to the South right, Coast. Right. We're off to the South Coast uh, to see Matt Samuel and uh, talk about Saints, Southampton, uh, trying to buy Man City's academy, quite interestingly, <laughs> at the moment. Brilliant. Dad, thanks again well, uh, for uh, joining us today. Listeners, make sure you are subscribed wherever you're listening to the podcast or hit the notification bell. We've got a lot more coming at you this week, another 19 Correspondent Week episodes on the way. Uh, other than that, though, do stay safe. Ciao for now. Thanks, Dan. Be nice to each other, everyone. Cue music, please, man, child.